Hi, so in today's video, I will be talking about AutoCamp Accounting version 2.0 new features. Okay, throughout this video, you will see what are the latest features in the general useful tools, inventory, sales, purchase, and also the accounting side. Okay, to start off, let's look into general useful tool first. Okay, there are a few new tools here, as you can see at the slide. I will go through them one by one, okay? Firstly, let's look into the dashboard. Now, in this version, user can add on the widget at the dashboard. They can also choose to display either their monthly sales or purchase graph on the dashboard. Other than that, they can also customize their favorite tiles on the dashboard, which are these tiles. They can choose to move up or down. They can create group. They can also adjust the size tiles. In this new version as well, user can now select the auto count system team color. Currently, we have three available team color, which are the dark blue, apple green, and silver light. So now let me show you how to add on the, your widget, how to customize your tiles, and how to choose your theme color as well. So let's go to the system. Oh, so this is the system. Once the user log in, they will see a few module here. To add on the widget, we can go to widget setting, click on add. Okay, so now we can select the function at the widget. Let's select monthly sales purchase, for an example. Okay, you can also customize this uh, widget by that range or type either sales or purchase. So we just click OK once everything is OK. So now the widget will be displayed at your dashboard. You can click on the bar to know the details of it. And for more details, you can double click at the title. So it will show you the relevant document. More than that, you can also change the display of the widget by simply right click it. And now you can see there's a converter too. You, now you can choose either to line graph or change it to pie chart. Other than being able to change the display of this widget, user can also copy this widget to the clipboard into the Excel sheet. How to do so? Just click copy to clipboard, open up your Excel sheet, copy it. And it will look similar to how it is being displayed at the dashboard. Okay, so how to add on your function tiles? Just simply click to your customize button here. Now you can see there are a few available function and few selected function. Selected function means it has been displayed at your dashboard. Available function means is the tiles that have not yet been displayed at your dashboard. You can move up or you can move down the tiles, the arrangement of the tiles. And you can also create a group for the tiles, for example, maybe uh, by stock or by sell or by purchase. And you can also uh, customize the size of the tiles at tile size. You can choose small, normal, or large. As for the themes, you can just simply go to click edit, and you can see the option button here, click it, and you can change the theme at the theme selection. For example, I select apple green, it will change the color of the theme. Okay, that's all for dashboard. Okay, so let's move on to the next new features in general useful tools, which are 
view floor. Now, in this version, user can view the complete floor of their related document in one screen. So basically, what this function does, it helps user to view or to track their document easily in just one screen, as shown at the slide. Okay, how do we use the view flow function? Let's go back into the system. Okay, for your information, view flow is only applicable at sales and purchase uh, transaction. So let's take purchase invoice for an example. You can select the invoice first. Here you can see there's a view flow button. Click it. And once you click the view flow, the system will show the current document status. You may click at the box style to view the current document details. That is all for view flow function. So let's move to the next features, which is now in this version, user can send preview report by only using WhatsApp. This feature will be linked to the web browser. Therefore, user must open their web browser in order to send out this report. So how do we use this function? Let's go back to the system again. Okay, let's use purchase invoice again for an example. Okay, so here we can select the document number first and click preview to send the preview report by WhatsApp is by simply clicking the WhatsApp button here. For the mobile number, it will immediately appear if you have preset it before, or if you haven't preset it before, you can just you can key in manually as well. So once everything is set, you can just simply click send. and it will direct you to your WhatsApp web. So now I will show you how you can preset the mobile number here. So let's close this report first. You can maintain it at either debtor maintenance or creditor maintenance. Okay, let's go to creditor maintenance. Click on any of the creditor, click edit. The creditor details will appear like so. So you can maintain the mobile number at here. Simply click the plus 60 button. So now you can add your mobile number. Once you have add your mobile number, you can click save. So the next time when you send the report by WhatsApp, the mobile number will appear immediately. Uh, this version, it actually allows user to create templates, especially for frequently used documents, such as quotation, sales order, invoice, uh, credit, not, and more. So once they create the template, they can just load the previous save template or previous created template and they can edit the template as well. By creating template, it actually helps the user to save a lot of time and also help them to reduce human error. So now I will show you how can we create the template in the system. Let's go back into the system. For your information, this template function can be used at sales, purchase, and also at the GL uh, under cashbook entry. Let me show you how you can create a template. As an example, if your office required to do a monthly purchase of printing stationery for the office use. Firstly, let's go to GL and let's create a new payment voucher. First, fill in the payment voucher detail. Select your payment mode, add in your account, add in your amount. 
once you have filled in all the details, you can go ahead and save as template. Here you can rename the template as well. So next time, if you wish to use the same template, you can click the add new, click new payment voucher, and the system will show you two templates. One template you have created before, and the other one is a fresh new template. If you require to use the same template created before, just simply click at the created template and it will show you the previous save template. You can still edit the template as well. Change the, you can either change the description or you can change the payment mode as well and the amount, or you can add new account. You can also maintain the template by simply go to others. So here you can assign which user can use this template, or let's say this template will no longer be used for future use, you can also delete the template. And that's how you create a template for payment voucher, you can also go ahead and do it at the sales or purchase. For this version, it comes with an advanced keyword search. So basically, with these features, it enables user to search the record in the system much more faster. They can either use to search by item code or by description. Let me show you how does it work in the system. Another feature that has been included in the general useful tools is the reoccurrence. This feature allows user to set the reoccurring transaction. It can be set by either daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. For example, let's make a new payment voucher for monthly office rent. Once you have filled in all the details, you can go ahead and click the save as occurrence. So here, a reoccurrence box will pop up. You can just put the name. Select the document format. If you select monthly, the system will ask you, would you like to do it from the beginning or the ending of the month? And from which day? So you can select on which day of the calendar, for example, on the 20th and of every month. And would you like to repeat it every month or twice a month or every third of the month? So for this case, I will put in every once a month since it involves office rental. For the range of reoccurrence, the system will ask you when will you like to start and when you would like to end this reoccurrence. You can either select end after or end by. So let's select the dead step. And see there is a reoccurrence user. This is basically to assign 
which user can use this reoccurrence. Once you have set up the reoccurrence pattern, the range, and who, and select the user, you may go ahead and click generate next reoccurrence step. So here it will show you the reoccurrence step of the following month. Okay, to manage this reoccurrence, you can go to others and manage reoccurrence. So here you can see that there are a few reoccurrence that has been saved. So that is how you can set the reoccurrence in the system. In this version, it allows users to apply formula to meet up their desired outcome. This is particularly useful for complicated calculation. Okay, next is define your own input layout. In this feature, it allows user to define or to customize their own uh, transaction layout. How to do so? Okay, let's take as invoice for an example. Right click and click the customize layout. From here, you can actually customize the header. For example, you don't want a cell agent, so you can just drag and put inside the hidden items. Or you don't want to show the multi-pricing, you can just drag into the hidden items as well. Or maybe you want to add a sales tax exemption, you can drag it out and put at the layout. Like so. so you can see that there's a few changes. To save this layout, just Click, right click again and save layout. You can rename the layout. So let's say if you click new again, it will show you the layout that you have saved previously.